and welcome everyone. It's time for another book recap video. I have 10 books that I have read since the last video and I'll post a link down below to that one. And lately I've been definitely slowing down in my reading, but I think partly just because I've been really busy with this field job and I thought that I would actually read more because originally I was camping out uh, a lot more and I had a lot of time <laughs> to read books. Uh, and then more recently I've been driving to my sites from home and when I'm home I've been crafting and such. So I just haven't had time to read. But anyways, it doesn't matter because I still read 10 books since the last time we talked. <laughs> the first book that I read was this, Gaio, or Gyo, by Jinji Ito, and this is a horror manga and is bizarre and graphic. And I read it because I read Uzumaki uh, earlier in the year and really enjoyed it. It was just fun and bizarre and the, the illustrations were really interesting. Uh, not a whole lot of like character development or anything like that, it just was fun. So I wanted to read another one of his works, and this one was just, it fell really flat for me. I did not enjoy this one at all. Uh, I'm really disappointed, but the main, the character you kind of follow around is just really obnoxious. I just don't like her, and I think she's a terrible representation for women, especially, because she's just always complaining about how things are dirty and gross and stinky and it hurts to walk and she like, and is mean to her boyfriend and just like, oh, she's a terrible person. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it's just like, man, if this is what the author thinks of women, that's, that's just, he's had some really bad experiences. But uh, so anyways, it just was kind of a bummer. Doesn't mean I won't read more of his works because I do think that there are other ones that people, um, in general really like and are really fond of. I don't know if this is one of them. Uh, so I'll try it. I'll try it out again. And actually, now that I have a little less time to be reading, I think a manga is is in order. That's what I should do because they're just really quick and easy and enjoyable. I also read three Agatha or MC Beaton novels and I'm just going to skim through these really quickly because they're all kind of the same, but I really like this author for just cozy, easy murder mysteries. Um, two of them are Hamish Macbeth, we have Death of a Gossip and Death of a Cad. I'm actually, I've read a couple of Hamish Macbeths in the past, but out of order. So I'm going back and starting at the very beginning of the series. This is the very first one and this is the second one, uh, just to get a better sense of who he is as a character. The first book in that series is definitely a little slow. I will say that. And I feel like if I didn't know, th if I wasn't familiar with Ham Hamish Macbeth already, I don't know if, if that book would have held my attention, to be honest. But because I knew where his story goes and who he is as a character, I was like, I can sit through, I can, you know, deal with it. Then was the Agatha Raisin and the Potted Gardener. I don't remember what number this is in the series, but once again, I'm trying to read all her books in order. And honestly, Agatha Raisin is just always really fun. <laughs> She's kind of a pill, uh, but in a charming way. I just really am quite fond of that character and she's enjoyable and sometimes really frustrating. And I'm like, I just want to slap her in the face and be like, can you stop it please? But she's fun, I, I really enjoy her. Then I read, I think, Day, Zero by Kelly Devos, and I really enjoyed this. It's it's pretty it's pretty linear, and there's not like super in depth character building or anything like that. But you do get to know the characters really well, and I did grow quite fond of them all, and really enjoyed following along on their apocalyptic or post apocalyptic journey, um, and. It definitely brought a lot of things to my mind and I was like, it's, it's interesting because this character is, her father was what one might loosely call a prepper 
being prepared for any possibility uh, in a like crisis situation, whether it's like a tsunami hit your town or the government uh, is being overtaken by a group of people. Um, and so it was just really interesting to like see how this prepper, um, which I think a lot of people like in, in our world, when we think of those, we're like, oh, these are really extreme and maybe these people are a little out of their mind. And it's just, so it was kind of cool to like see that all of his prepping was actually really helpful in this crisis situation. Um, it was, there was a lot of things that just seemed a little bit unrealistic, but for the most part, it was really fun. And it was based in Arizona, about two hours away from where I live. So that was really fun as well. I liked it so much because I just, it just was like one of those books where it grabs you by the hand and you just kind of run along with, with the narrator. And I really like that because you kind of forget you lose time and you forget where you are and you're just swept up. So then I read day one, which is the sequel. And oh, I had a really hard time getting through this book. I really had a hard time. I really struggled. Everything, like, I feel like the characters who actually, you know what, I recant what I said earlier about the lack of character development. That's, that's bull. Like, they were actually really well developed. And this book, it was like, suddenly they were doing things that were so out of character. And it was just like, who are you? It felt really rushed. The storyline was absolutely ridiculous and unbelievable. It just kind of like took the epicness in this book and put it in a different level that just felt really not very well thought out of, and I was very disappointed. Uh, and I hate to be so critical because I really admire anyone that can write a book and I really admire anyone that could get published and like that's a lot of work. Um, and I really loved the first book, but this one was just really disappointing and I kind of, I would have been happier to not have read it. I would have been happy just like imagining what happens to these characters, then moving on to the sequel. Then I read this book, Laughing at My Nightmare, by Shane Burkaw, and this is a nonfiction about this man here who has MS. And he is so funny and honest and just really, really engaging. And this is about his full, like his first 21 years of life, basically. Uh, from the time of birth to where he was at that moment of writing the book. Um, and it just is really, it's really honest. And sometimes it made me cry. And a lot of times it made me laugh. And it just, yeah, I really, I think this was a great book. It was a very easy read. He writes like he's just having a conversation with you. Like he's just talking like a friend to you. Uh, while being really entertaining and perhaps being a bit on stage. So maybe not a casual conversation, but it was really enjoyable and I do recommend that book for sure. Then my partner and I actually read this book aloud to each other. This is Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. And... Uh, I wanted to like this book a lot more than I did. The first, I don't know, I really enjoyed like this much of the book. Uh, it's about this, this young robot who, it's all written in her perspective, so it's really fascinating to get to know the world and the character through a robot's perspective. And I just, there were so many elements that I really, really loved. I don't know, the ending just kind of was like, oh, that's where we're ending up. That's where this story is going. And maybe I'm missing the big picture. <laughs> maybe, I, I don't know, but it also kind of fell flat for my partner too. Um, we both had a similar experience where we were just really captivated early on. Uh, in fact, I started reading this and was like, you know what, I'm gonna pause because I think my partner would really appreciate this too. And we've read, out loud books together in the past and so I was like hey this might be a book we want to read together and I read him the first chapter and he's like oh yeah let's definitely so it 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 is a really unique 
perspective that was very, 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 very well planned out, I think. I think the character Clara, who is the, the robot, was just so brilliantly created and I really loved her and felt very connected to her. Um, but I just, I don't know, the ending was just kind of like, Bleh. okay. Then I read Still Life by Louise Penny and this is another crime fiction novel with, that is a series. So this is the first book in the Chief Inspector Gamache and Oh, I fell in love with this story and this detective and the town that it took place in. I really love her writing. She's definitely one of the more, uh, I don't know how to describe. She gets really, really into what makes the characters tick and why they do what they do and how they think and how they feel. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting and she does it really well. She she represents these characters exceptionally well. Like they are all a part of her in some way. Like she just knows them very well and I think she writes them very well. And they're all they're all really charming and lovable in their own way. And I will definitely continue on in this series. I'm excited to continue on in that series. And then last but not least, and this is my favorite of the bunch, was The Lovely and Dangerous Launch of Lucy Cavanaugh by Stacy Peterson. And this was actually, this is a signed copy to me. This was a birthday gift from a friend of mine who lives in Montana. And Stacy Peterson is his hairdresser. So that's how he found out about this book. And oh my gosh, it just checked all the boxes. It was like, the perfect feel-good story. It's set in the late 1800s with this woman that moves from New York City, I think, to the West and all of these horrible things happen to her along the way and she gets caught up in something very different than she expected and it's just simply her navigating life. And she's very lovable and I, I want to be friends with her. And the best part of it all, I actually, the very, the, nearing the end of the book, I started to slow down in my reading because I was a little bit anxious for how the story would end. And a lot of books will, I think, a lot of authors try to please their audience by having a nice little neat ending that is feel good. And then there's books that are more um, like, no, that's not life. I'm just gonna, you know, this is gonna be a crappy ending. Everybody dies and you're gonna be depressed. And I was a little worried <laughs> that it would be that kind of book because I just really loved this character and grew very fond of her. And I wanted everything to work out and everything did. And it felt so good. I was just like, thank you. <laughs> I feel like such a baby, but thank you. I am so happy that things are working out for this character. I really loved her so much. I love the world. I love the setting. It was just a lot of fun. So that is my reading recap for mid, the mid-year. And I might do a reading recap for the end of the year as well, just depending on how many books I read. I guess I could do it even if I read one book. I mean, technically I am reading one book right now. It's just moving really slow, so. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for watching. Bye.